to be a bit more creative with the way that they approach the strategies. We looked at Dark Zero and the way that they played Oregon a couple weeks back, and including the way they played Oregon last night. There are opportunities to make small adjustments or completely new strategies that take advantage of the way that the map plays out. And I think that that's what we're going to see from one of these two teams here on Border. So we'll launch in and we'll start off the ban phase between both Orglis and Reciprocity. Oh. And he had a zero ban rate going into today's matchup, but there you go. That will mar his perfect record as Thatcher is the very first ban. Interesting to see, but not entirely surprising. You would often see him on Oregon. Uh, I think it's probably one of his most commonly banned on maps, but uh, on a map like Border also makes a lot of sense. It's going to uh, make the information gathering for the defense quite a lot easier. And it's going to slow down the attackers more. You're going to be able to potentially bandit trick more efficiently, and those lesion traps will be more important. Mira being banned out alongside Glass for reciprocity. And uh, we'll see what that final one is. Looks like it's going to be Maestro. Would have been weird if we had had either or Echo or, or Echo and Maestro both in play. Doesn't often happen. Would have been weird if it had. So uh, Maestro being banned out makes a whole lot of sense. So does the Mira. I mean, overall, these are just pretty basic bands apart from the Thatcher. Yeah, especially when you look at the, the context of the way that a Thatcher ban happens on border. Armory lockers, you know, you're going to rely on your Thatcher to, to dispatch any breach denial that you're going to find on either the office walls, maybe fountain walls, mm. you know, maybe armory walls, archives walls, whatever you, whatever you really find, that's going to be gone, and it's going to be incumbent to run either maybe an IQ, maybe a Twitch. We see both on the board here, actually, from Reciprocity. I mean, if you think about how Border plays, uh, then having the IQ Twitch is... Okay, IQ Twitch generally is going to be a good um, replacement for a Thatcher. You're going to be able to find the targets, and then you can direct your Twitch to the targets. But, I mean, we're talking about Border as well. you got to factor in that soft destruction, especially vertically. You've got the buff and the Zofia. That's going to be a lot of more pressure on those gadgets. Say you put a buck and an IQ underneath. You don't even need the Twitch drone to go inside. And since the Mira is banned out, the Twitch is exclusively brought for the electronics. So it, this is going to be, I'm guessing, a, a bit of a combination punch here from uh, Reciprocity as they're going to try and focus on taking out that utility. The only thing that might thwart a possible Twitch drone would be the fact that the mute jammers can often be put uh in certain locations where a Twitch drone just can't get access to it. And that's going to be why you have the IQ, that's going to be why you have the Buck, that's going to be why you have the Zofia, because most of the places where the Mute Jammers will be put, the second floor of Border, allow you to, will allow you to get underneath it and use the Soft Destruction to take them out, which will then free the path for the Twitch drone to be able to go in. Retro going to be quick into the East Stairs. You might call it a waste on a default cam, but that East Stairs camera is going to distract you as you enter there, and that will free up a little bit of time, potentially win an engagement for the attackers. So a smart use of the zap there from Reciprocity. Just taking it slow. They got a soft wall into Armory. Quite interesting. You do not see that very much. That's going to make the Thermite's job kind of, well, I mean, different. He's definitely not going to be opening up that Armory wall. But uh, there might still yet be a commitment to the office take. So you can see the reason they've opened the, the armory wall, actually, is that Orgos is playing the 75% hold inside a CCTV. They got Yeti Maman playing CCTV. That's very dangerous. But at the same time, can really get your team an advantage, especially if the enemy decides to push into offices. And it seems as though Orgos is trying to force a bait into office take. Retro's going to get the first kill, though, onto Yeti. Long angle from East Stairs into CCTV. Yeti must have been looking through a punch hole there and gives away his life. And that's a dock trying to use, and there you go. You can see it. It might doesn't actually look like a punch hole. That it's looks a like full a full rotation. That looks like a full rotation. Might have been caused by the attackers, though, so that's something to keep yeah. in mind as well. But you're going to lose the dock, which is unfortunate. Yeti plays a style that is very aggressive, and he does tend to be either the opening frag or the person getting the opening frag. So obviously, something to keep in mind of here. Now, knowing that there's a mute jammer on the other side of this wall, you're going to require some kind of destruction on that breach denial, and Foxy taking out acid is going to give great breathing room for reciprocity. Crazy also losing quite a bit of HP as he's on the move downstairs, trying to get back. But both of those stairwells from reciprocity will be watched. It's a trade as my man takes out Skies, but Retro's there, picks up kill number two, finds the mute, returning to sight, leaving Brian with the SMG-11. 
try and close people off. And he'll finish off Fox A. This is a long rotate from a man. His position will be given away. He's just going to wait outside. It's going to be a marker for the rest of the opponents to be able to find him as he tries to get in through Passport. But there's not an awful lot of time left. There you go. My man finally pinched out. It'll leave Brian alone inside a small office. He's got the Sophia on one side. And as he tries to detonate that toxic canister, it'll be laxing, collecting the kill. That'll be it for round number one. So the strategy that was set up there from Orgus was a bit of a bait uh, and switch. What they were trying to do is uh, bait reciprocity into taking office by leaving the armory wall unreinforced and saying, hey, you don't know what's going on here. You don't want to attack this. It's a little bit weird. We haven't reinforced armory wall. And uh, granted, Orgus did achieve what they wanted. They forced reciprocity into an office attack. Um, but it didn't work out well for Orglis. A big part of that, in my mind, is because we saw Yeti get picked off so early on as the doc in CCTV. His job was to do quite a lot of the work there. He was supposed to delay the office push. You could see that. It was evident thanks to the rotation holes and uh, murder holes that were opened up in abundance uh, from CCTV into office itself. So losing that ACOG on the angle made the hold there for Orglis quite a lot more difficult. There were a couple other tools that Orglis set up to hold office that did not get utilized properly or were countered directly by reciprocity. For example, Crazy tried to rotate downstairs as the mute and C4 from below. Acid got picked off really early on in the engagement as the Echo. So pretty much every single tool that Orglis was setting up to hold onto the B-bomb site, whether it was Yeti in CCTV, whether it was Acid all the way in Armory, or whether it was the C4 of Crazy from below, got taken out. The only one that managed to do any work was Brian as the smoke, and he did quite a lot, as did my man, actually, to be fair, getting that kill on CCTV, but it just wasn't enough to recover fully. Good job to reciprocity seeing the tools and countering them. I'm a little confused as to how Orglis lost two bodies inside of CCTV without reciprocity even entering the door to CCTV. Both of those came through east stairs or from the holes that were opened up in Fountain all the way in to monitors and CCTV side. That just strikes me as very sloppy on behalf of Orglis and over-peaking, which is a team like Orglis, that's their wheelhouse. They will over-peak everything and get far too aggressive. And sometimes it works, and in that case, it, it didn't. Yeah, definitely something that Orglis is gonna have to work on, just like covering their mute jammers. Retro just got serious efficiency out of that Twitch drone. And uh, honestly, it's on crazy. He wasn't paying attention to his jammers. He was distracted by a different job. And now because of that, Reciprocity is going to be able to open up that office wall should they choose to. And uh, that's a little bit funny there from Retro. He must have zapped the camera and then he still checked it. I do that too. I think most people do. If they're going to zap the East Stairs uh, camera, they're, they, they'll still double check it when they go into the building. But uh, Yeti, back alive as uh, we have changed rounds. He'll be playing in CCTV again. Last time, he was the first pick and unable to accomplish anything in the round. You can see that he is playing much safer this time around. And uh, expect him to accomplish much more because of that. Or at least distract reciprocity. Very similar setup, though, with all these walls on both sides of Archives into Armory. And then also inside of Fountain. Completely opened up and then no reinforcements whatsoever on the armory side of things, anticipating that reciprocity will decide to go in through archives. Also, you mentioned how effective Retro was on this first drone. We just saw the same thing from the second drone there as well, cleaning up those mute jammers. And though Crazy won't have the utility in hand, nor on the ground, it's gonna play underneath, and that's a big explosive start to the killing. But it's gonna come quite late in the round, one minute to go, and there goes the only hard breach on reciprocity side. Two of the three major mistakes that Orglis made in the previous round have now been corrected. The C4 from Crazy underneath was successful. Yeti has not died in CCTV. Acid is still alive, so if he manages to influence this round, it will be the third mistake corrected. Excellent shot there from Fox A on the main stairs. My man will go down. The player who was getting kills in the last round, that's gonna be a good boon for Reciprocity, but they've already lost their Thermite, and that means they can't make a rotation into the B-bomb site. I know there's a Yokai drone there, but that wall very tough to take through. Fox are gonna get one Yokai, and then the second as well. Oh up. He's gonna get down. Tries to get himself back up. Crazy is there for the trade, but Laxing, who started over towards CCTV side, has gotten in and is very, very close to being able to take control of sight. Retro's gonna wander in with the best gun in the hands of him, but he'll miss the shot. And once again, Brian playing exceedingly well. 
It's going to be very difficult for Laxing, who's going to have to go for frags here, but he knows he has no chance. One second left on the clock, and Perseverance! And Patience from Orgos will carry them onwards. An excellent round, given to the fact as well. The Reciprocity were just a bit too slow, and they had to make that change after losing that hard breacher. They did so, and they got tantalizingly close to taking the round, but close only counts in hand, you know, what is it? What do they say, Michael? Horseshoes and hand grenades. I don't know that one. Thank you for teaching it to me. I've taught you it, my son. Oh, okay. Well, Orglis, in that round, corrected every single mistake they made in the first. Again, it's the C4 from below from Crazy. Uh, Brian did a whole lot of work, just like he did in the first round. My man did die on the main stairs, but he was the least influential operator in the entire round. You saw the echoes persist for the whole round, and the second Yoke drone looked like we, it looked like the IQ got it, but it actually uh, stayed alive and was able to gather quite a lot of information in archives late in that round. And then Yeti did not get picked off in CCTV. So major props to Orgla seeing all the mistakes they were making and correcting them. Reciprocity becoming a little predictable in that round and attacking through office once again. I, I understand that a uh, unreinforced army wall can maybe be daunting or distracting, uh, but it's clearly a, it's it's clearly Orgless trying to bait Reciprocity into taking from the other side, and I'm surprised, honestly, that uh, Reciprocity committed to that office take two times in a row. Um, could have maybe been a different result if they had decided to try and take Armory. But it's also entirely possible that it, you know, it had nothing to do with how Orgless set things up. It was just that Reciprocity wanted to attack office. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I feel like there was a match that we watched just a couple days back. Um, it's the Mock and Empire match, where, if you recall, Empire went over towards the office slash archive side every single round that they attacked on. Yeah. No matter where the bomb site was, Empire took office and archives first. And it uh, worked out pretty well for them. It worked out pretty darn well. They lost one round because of it. Yeah. But, uh, and that was because the opponents stacked all of their utility into office. Yep. Yeah. And, and that was only, and, th and as well, if I recall, that was a workshop take, too, that they ended up losing it on, so... Not a big deal. Also, Mocket plays very differently from Orglas, so... Yeah. Also something to keep in mind. Almost identical setup here from Orglas, despite the fact the bomb site is downstairs. Not strange, given the way that Border tends to play out, but interesting that this would be the play on behalf of the defenders. Yeah, clearly Org was expecting Reciprocity to go for a clear into office once more. And that seems to be the uh, trend these days, I suppose. Uh, we've been seeing this quite a lot, and Reciprocity is committed to that office take. But they've also got players elsewhere coming up towards the armory wall. You can see that Sophia trying to do some work. Skies in the main hallway will be spotted out and hit by that Legion goo trap. So he's going to fall back to office. And Play it a little bit safe. Laxing exposed to Yeti, but uh, clearly not going to lose that fight. As Yeti goes down, Reciprocity now put themselves up a man, and that's the second round that Yeti has gone down early. The only reason why I would imagine Yeti playing in their solo would be that the hatch inside a monitor slash CCTV was opened, allowing him to drop. But that didn't appear to be the case, because, well, if you take a look, he gets gunned down in a great pinch from Reciprocity as they go for a second on him, a man. But he'll drop into the steady hands of Crazy from below. He'll get picked back up. It's likely that whoever downed uh, my man there did not know that he downed him. It, it might have been through a wall, and of course, as a reminder, there are no point notifications for Pro League players. Retro will take down my man, so Reciprocity put themselves up two already. We've got 40 minutes to attack this site, and no roamers left on Orgos' side as they've been all forced back in. Brian, an excellent shot on the laxing, as is typical with his gunplay so far today. 40 minutes left in the round, Michael. This is a casual. Okay, we don't have that. Did much I say time. 40 minutes? Said 40 minutes. But that's that's okay. 30 seconds now. Uh, I guess you could say 40 minutes, and it will feel like an eternity for the defense here as reciprocity closes in. Mark tasked with getting the diffuser down and hard destruction in hand. We'll take down Brian, leaving just Crazy and Acid left to hold off on reciprocity. Crazy will start things off, and Acid gets one as well. They'll close that gap. They'll close it in a hurry. Crazy still prone just by the lumber pile. He could pop up at any point to be able to take somebody down. And he sees him, but he cannot land the shots. The SMG-11 better in Skies' hands. Acid will need to not try deny this plant. But outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned. Foxy will get the final kill, and Reciprocity will take their first attack on the ventilation workshops downstairs. Excellent job there to Reciprocity. Just kill after kill ended up working out great for them. Now... 
we're going to be going back to ventilation, as is expected. As Armory was successful within the last three rounds, they are going to have to go to that secondary site. Unlikely to see them deliberately go to customs or tellers unless they were forced to. Now, let's see. Overall, from the lineup, we're seeing a lot of the same here from Reciprocity and Orglis both. But, oh, this is interesting. A six pick off of an IQ into a Maverick. So, another one of those replacements for Thatcher, but I I find it quite interesting considering Echo is still a thing that could be in play. It isn't Attack in this case. Orgus have decided spot. to forego the Echo, but it's still quite interesting. I mean, the Legion was not a bad choice last time. Acid, I think, did quite well on that Legion, not just in terms of intel gathering with the traps being activated, and if Acid is going to play as conservatively and reservedly as he did, then you're going to be able to get as many of those goo mines down as you possibly can before an early pick comes out. So I think that's smart. Also, knowing that there was an IQ on Reciprocity's side almost every single round, Acid was losing his Yokai drones early. Because of that, I think that they decided as a team, Orglis was better served yeah, than somebody else. Now, Maverick is an interesting one here. Fabian was on the Hot Breach podcast, of, I want to say, a, a week or two ago and mentioned that almost every single composition that G2 comes up with has to be done with a Maverick being played in mind, just because there's so many different ways that he can get around your setup. And I wonder if that's something that NA tends to do as well, or if it's a uniquely G2 or a European thing. Quickly into the bathroom here. Fox A is gonna open up a hole and, oh, narrowly missed out on a kill there. Very close to finding his target, and it doesn't seem that Brian is actually aware he's still looking the wrong way as the Thermite attempts to open up the wall. He will be stopped by the Mute Jammer. This is such efficiency, but oh, some serious mistakes being made by Reciprocity. This guy's gonna shoot the Exothermic Charge before the nade even detonates. I'm not sure what he was thinking. It might have made it out alive in that situation, but either way, some serious mistakes being made by Team Reciprocity. They had a nice, well-calculated rush in through Tellers, but it has now stalled out and is fully uh, given away to Orglis. Just a really poor use of utility there. I mean, it was a mistake, to be fair. Multiple mistakes, though. The good news is that you do have a Maverick who could possibly just cut open the bottom of the barricade and be able to take out the Mute Jammer behind it the amount of soft destruction that Reciprocity is doing on the other side of the map, in towards custom slash passports, you got to imagine that Acid's position is known. You have both Skies and Laxing trying to pick off this Legion. And after a bit of a frustrating set with a lack of results, there you go, Laxing hops onto the drone to try and figure out exactly where the location is of the cargo shorts wearing operator with his drone being shot. I'd imagine that they probably have a good assumption, but no real knowledge. You still got the man up top, and this Orglis, this Orglis defense is holding steady, I want to say, even though you just, lose, you just lost two members in the plant. Ready to go down. Mark is in sight, and Orglis is nowhere to be found. Reciprocity reading into this perfectly, knowing that you just need to push in towards the site. Plant has been abandoned for the time being. Final minute to go. Team Reciprocity just trying to play it safe right now. So Mark is waiting for his opportunity, but Brian still... Danger close, and here we go. The Diffuser going down. Skies will as well. Brian with the rush will take out Mark. That was the planter. Orglis now in a man advantage with Skies still on the floor. He will be finished off by Brian, who has been playing this round to perfection. Retro will take out my man, though, evening us back up. Now we're in a two on two. Brian on low HP, Retro on low HP. Could go either way. With 28 seconds, Aston is going to play it as poorly as possible, and Retro will get a free kill because of it. Laxing the final kill, and Reciprocity will take the round. That was simply Orglis realizing we're out of time. We only have one body on site. If I don't make my move now, I might not get back alive. But you go the wrong way. Which is really puzzling for Acid, because you know that Reciprocity has bodies stacked up over on the side of East Stairs. That's exactly where Skies and Laxing were playing. So what do you do? You push towards East Stairs. You vault through the window. In Passport or Border Control at the bottom, right into the line of sight of Retro. Really suspect decision-making skills there, especially when you could have tried to rotate in through Ventilation Door, through the front of Workshop Door. You had opportunities. You had avenues, and yeah... You might get cut down in the corridor by the bottom of the stairs. But that's a lot better than vaulting through a window right into the lion's mob. Yeah, and it's it's definitely a safer rotation too. It's a narrow angle and you're you're moving, you know, 
perpendicular to the angle that they're going to be playing, so it's going to be a pretty hard shot for anybody to hit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a mistake made and uh, ended up costing all with the round. I mean, Brian, again, I, I will say this, Brian has been playing absolutely phenomenally for his team, but it's not, it's not everything. You know, you can't rely just on Brian getting all the frags. Um, I, mean, I mean, you could. Would they, honestly, and you might lose. If we're, if we're taking a step back here, that round that Orglis managed to win on Armory last time they were here, Brian was really showing up for them. And it, he was a big part of why that actually happened. But not the entire part. There was also the C4 from Crazy and just the overall good play from Orglis. Yeti stayed alive for a long time. And anyway, moving on. We're back to Armory for the third time here. And uh, Orglis definitely really want to take this as the Reciprocity have been looking in good form so far in this match. See the mute being a huge factor once again here for Orglis, and it's going to have to be a hurdle that Reciprocity will have to jump over. Very disappointed in the way that Orglis has established those mute chambers and provided very minimal coverage for them as well. I understand. Fair, I understand yeah. that Retro's Twitch drone is designed to take out your mute jammers, but he's getting them for free, as we touched upon in those two rounds. Someone needs to cover the mute jammers. Absolutely. So just like you would cover a mirror window. Which is what the mute looked like he was doing. It did appear that Crazy was sitting on top of it inside of Fountain and inside of offices, rotating in and out. Crazy's going to take out Fox, eh? So at least he's going to be aggressive enough in his actual play. It's whether his gadgets will be able to maintain on the board or not. Yeah, so that's that's really good for Orglis uh, managing to get that man advantage. They really do need every advantage they can get so far. And oh no, Retro again. Crazy Stay is doing his best. It's not working out, though. Mark will miss an opportunity there, but it was a narrow shot and can't really blame him. But oh, you can definitely blame him for that. Crazy landing an excellent shot onto Mark. That's the hard breacher once again gone. And that was a big mistake from Mark as well. Crazy's mute, or the mute jammer that Crazy lost was on the separate panel from where the exothermic charge was. Mark simply could have peeled off the one, put it on the other, and then tried to go in from that route, knowing that you would have been more exposed, though, because that panel that Mark would have opened up would have been all the way in towards CCTV and monitor. So obviously a very conscious decision that was made by Reciprocity. But that decision just cost you your heart breach and is now going to put Reciprocity in a position where number one, they're in a 3v5, and number two, very similar set of circumstances that we saw previously when the heart breach went down early and Reciprocity could not make the changes necessary. They have not flushed out CCTV. That's exactly where Yeti is going to sit on his ACOG-laden throne and he'll pick off yet another member of Reciprocity. So two rounds where Crazy gets the Hard Reacher, and two rounds, it seems, where Orglis takes the win. Unless Laxing and Retro are gonna give us an excellent clutch in the last 40 seconds of this round. It does seem unlikely as the gas canisters start to pop inside of B. Brian still has two more, and he's just waiting patiently. He knows the Twitch has nothing that can do to take out that smoke, but oh, what a shot from Retro! That is one of the tightest angles you can hit in this entire game between that metal, the metal bar and the metal plate. And a very impressive shot there from the Twitch. But there's no time. 13 seconds left to go, and Laxing's moving his way down the main hallway. He'll die to my man. And that's a great job to the Jaeger, but Re Retro gets his second, going for the third, but will not be able to get it. Orglis take their second round total in this matchup on the same defense as the first. It's a beautiful trick shot there from Acid to look down uh the rail of his gun instead of through the actual ACOG himself. Very impressive aiming and a sight that very few people would be able to, to look through. Yeah, absolutely. It was a joke, Michael. I, I, I did not catch it. That's okay, it's fine. I, don't, I actually don't know what you said. I was writing something down. I'm sorry, Parker. It's okay. You guys should see his face right now. He looks defeated. I was, I was very proud of that one. Anyway, two important tools probably the two most important in order to take control of offices and then begin your assault on the archives were lost at the very mm -hmm. start of that push. Number one, the IQ, which allowed both of Acid's Yokai drones to stay in play until the very end. You saw that one of the Yokai drones was positioned in archives, looking down in a position where it could cover all three entryways, the vents entrance through the window, the balcony entrance, and then the entrance through found. You don't have an IQ on the board. The only thing that's going to be able to see it, other than just simply an eye test, is going to be the Twitch drone with the taser. And you might be out of charges by then. Or maybe you're not looking for it. Maybe you don't see it. Maybe it's in a position where the Twitch drone can't even reach it, depending on the map or depending on the site. So that's why IQ is paramount in that circumstance. But Fox, I got lost early on. Second, even though you were able to take out one of the mute jammers in thanks to, or in part, thanks to Retro's play, Mark 
basically took a heads-up challenge and on a 50-50 he lost it. Those are two of your most important tools to secure the site and get your push off. Losing the heart breach is fine as long as you can bait out the smokes, as long as you can take out the Yokai drones. But with 20 seconds left, 30 seconds left, Michael, Brian still had two toxic canisters remaining and there were still Yokai's left from Acid. Yeah, definitely a well-played round there from Orgos managing to uh, position themselves properly, but also getting those two lucky kills early on, like you talked about with the IQ and the Thermite. Um, now, moving into this round, here's the dangerous thing for Orglis. Uh, they have yet to win a ventilation defense. They've gone to it twice, they've lost it twice. And they lost their first attempt on Armory despite winning the other two. So, if Restorosity is able to win vents for the third time in a row, ending the half 4 2, I mean, that's a really great way to start the, the match for Restorosity. Going into their defense fab, they're going to be extremely confident, I'm sure. So, we'll see if they're able to pull that off. They're starting things off yet again with a take into office. One thing that I will note is that Reciprocity has been very inefficient this round. They've already used a minute and they've accomplished Nilch. So, they're definitely going to have to, uh, or Zilch, excuse me. I was, I was, I was, cut. well, whatever, moving on. They haven't accomplished anything and they definitely need a little bit more control, maybe some picks. Orgus are playing extremely passive though. So, part of this is Reciprocity's caution. Another part is the same on Orgus' side. Yeah, the Thatcher ban proving to be quite a smart idea as well from Orgless here with the Mute Jammer, or the Mute Jammer's really getting a lot of value, though. Mm -hmm. I will give a lot of credit to Retro for his ability to be able to take those Jammers out, and rather, a lot falling on Orgless for failing to protect those Jammers correctly. You know, this is typically a very Oregon-heavy strat, as you mentioned. That's where you see Thatcher get banned out. Ooh, beautiful shot from Skies. Oh, my. Wow. The top. A ventilation just outside, looking all the way in onto the dock inside of CCTV. That's a crushing blow. What does Skies do as a player? He lands the shots. He does. That's what he does. You've got a bit of a slow pace being set from Reciprocity, as you mentioned, and it really hasn't picked up at any point. 40 seconds left with nine bodies well, still in play down. here. Utility from Orgless in the hands of the Toxic Canisters. Another failure from Skies to be able to finish off Crazy, though. It's the same position that he took the dock from. Crazy's rotated over and he'll hold the wall, just looking in towards Archives. It's going to be an advantage here, though, if Skies doesn't look the right way, as Reciprocity puts up two on the board, but there you go. Skies makes quick work of what little was left of Crazy, leaving Acid as the only member of Orgless against three from Reciprocity. Ten seconds to go. Destruction from above. Acid trying to patrol way too many areas. It's going to see one. He'll take out Skies, but his position given away in the dynamic duo. Skies and Laxing, as Laxing is able to take out Acid. And as you said, Michael, calling it very correctly, Orglas might be all right on Armory. Their Achilles heel right now is that workshop site. They drop every single chance that they go there. It's a 4-2 split for Reciprocity in the first half. The real kicker, kicker though, for Orglas is the fact that they lost Armory the first time there. I mean, they... they... There's no other way they were going to be able to defend it uh, three times around, so I suppose it doesn't really matter in the long run. They potentially could have won it and then won it again and then still ended the half 4-2 if uh, they were forced to go to a different site. But at the same time, it really, yeah, is not going to instill a lot of confidence in you as a player that uh, you only managed to take Armory twice of the three times you went there, and that's all you got from your defensive half on a map like Border. So... Orgus now in a really tricky spot, I have to say. Going into the second half, I don't know that they're going to be filled with confidence based on that first, but we'll see. Maybe they show us something extreme. Pull out uh, rubber from the hat. Team Reciprocity in that last round, very patient uh, is the word I would use. The caution, I think, was a little bit too much, but they managed to make it work in the end. They came very close to losing on time, but at the same time, Reciprocity pulled it out, and that's all that really matters. So yeah, good job to them. Looking at the numbers just in terms of kills and deaths that we see on both sides of this coin here, Retro's 10 kills, two deaths. The lack of deaths is what's really most telling about that. You've been having Retro as a backup entry. He hasn't been one of your two main prongs. In a lot of ways, Reciprocity have been using Skies and Laxing to do that, with Fox A subbing in some rounds to take point. And then you have Retro basically flank watching. Holding off, tight angles, F2 in hands, and if you're playing Twitch every single round, well, it's inarguably probably the best gun in the game. So you've got a, a good steady hand, 
who's landing his shots. He can make a lot of different operators work. We've seen Retro on Ash, we've seen him on Blackbeard, we've seen him on Thatcher, now we see him on Twitch. A lot of flexibility there, and he's really cleaning up for his team and carrying the weight without having to entry too, which is most impressive. And Retro definitely an interesting player. It's good to see him coming back. My man, what is this? Using the skeleton key to perfection. Must have had information on Foxe inside of customs, and he will get a very free kill early on. That was the Pulse, who obviously is going to want to play underneath and try to use the destroy, uh, destructible floor slash ceiling to his advantage, but it will be used against him. Great job again to the buck of the man. Now, they're going to be working their way into armory, and so far, this is actually the most efficient armory take we've seen. It's also the only armory take we've seen so far in this match because we never saw anything other than an office take from Reciprocity. Yeah, I mean, the Mute Jammers are going to be very effective on both sides of things as well, and if you've got good protection on behalf of the way that Mark is playing this, then you can essentially not really worry about office, not really worry about fountain, not really worry about archives, and just solely focus on the armory side of things. The biggest issue is at the soft destruction, which Reciprocity was running quite a bit of Michael, and now we see Orglas having in spades with the Ash, the Zofia, and the Buck, will mean that the only downstairs player of Reciprocity, Fox A being off the board, will be a huge hindrance. Though, don't discredit the fact that Laxing, who could possibly be primed for a run out outside of these stairs, but there's nobody there. He gets detected for just a second. That is rough. But it also looked like he was heading downstairs, which could put a thorn in the side of Orglas. Yeah, Laxing is just doing his best to stay alive and distract for as long as possible, but the detection is going to give away his intent. Unfortunately for him, it's really hard to flank onto a CCTV armory take, and Orglas clearly thinking of that when they go for this push. The grenade from Buck primed and ready. My man will not throw it out, though. There's still an ADS, I believe, in play. He only has the one left, and he's waiting for his opportunity, but also watching for that potential run out from below that Mark is set up for right now. The rush in here from Orgos, they're in small office and by Lucker Sandwich. Crazy will get two as he enters. Retro and Skies go down, that's leaving it just on the Roamers. Not gonna be an easy recovery here for Reciprocity, and Laxing as he comes back to site will go down, leaving just Mark. He's used his C4 already, he doesn't even have a shotgun to open the ceiling, and he will now be in a one versus five, a perilous situation. He has three lit operators on the enemy team, but now he himself will be on just over 25 HP and finally die to Yeti. Orgos take their first round on attack, and in dominant fashion, a perfect round losing nobody. Yeah, flawless round's a pretty good way to start things off, I'd say. Oh yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that's gonna definitely instill you with quite a lot of confidence. Yeah, that was Orgos making it look easy, actually. Mm -hmm. Which is very surprising, because I feel like every time we see Reciprocity play defense, they can often be very smothering. And very difficult to smother a team, that always seems to breathe life into different parts of the map with the way that they play. I don't know, Orglis is a Orglis is a bit of an enigma when you really look at it in the way yeah. that they they you don't really know what they're gonna do round through round through round. I mean I hope they know what they're gonna do round through round, but it's, for us, there's a lot of unpredictability in the way that they play. It can catch their opponents off guard. And I think that's why they're able to keep even with so many teams that are just as aggressive, but also more strap based too. I mean Orglis is unpredictable, not only from round to round, but also from match to match. I mean, you look at their record so far for the season, first uh, first play day, a loss to Rogue. Second play day, a win against Rise and a dominant win, 7-1. Uh, uh, third play day, a loss to EXG, and then they draw Space Station. Which is, again, that's impressive. Space Station have been playing pretty well so far. I say they've been playing pretty well. They have three draws and one loss. But no, they've been playing well. You know, as a team, they haven't got a great record yet, but I think they've definitely got the potential. They qualified for the Invitational. Anyway, moving on from that, they draw against SSG, and no, I don't think many people expected that. So yeah, Orglis have so much potential, and we see them do some incredible things, but they have yet to really fully realize that potential, and those incredible things are still, you know, sparse, all things considered. All right, how will we see Reciprocity respond as this gap between these two teams has shrunk by one round and allowed Orglis and enabled Orglis to be very aggressive on their first assault? Well, it's going to be their second crack at it. We'll go back upstairs to Armory. This has been a site that both teams lost the very first time. You're hoping that for Reciprocity fans, that they're able to take this round in hand push them closer to match point as well as give them a little bit of breathing room between Orglis and themselves in what has been probably more of a 
back and forth than I think some people definitely anticipated, especially given reciprocity's success through this season and Orglis, their struggles at the start. But they've looked like a new team so far as they've continued onwards. I wonder how much that has to go to their coaching as well. Keep in mind that Unreal Ghost Sniper has been the one at the hand of the tiller for Orglis in terms of their strat work and all that jazz. And obviously, having a coach at this level is incredibly vital to being successful. Mark gets the first kill there. Reciposti put themselves up one, and that's the IQ. Yeah, Definitely a very a important kill, considering the pulse end. That the Valkyrie cams are still in play. As much as that has happened, though, we did see Yeti get the batteries from below, and because of that, enter in through the armory wall is now an option. Orglis are still in a decent position despite losing that man early on. They can't get back into this match. My man is looking to try and open some things up from below, but he's got enemies to confront in ventilation and workshop, so he's not able to just walk in downstairs. Because nobody's droning for him, he will have to drone for himself, and that is inefficiency to the max. Yeti, though, has seen an opportunity. Mark, the only one holding onto the B bomb site. This could be a giant win for Orglis if he seizes it. And he will. Yeti takes down Mark, and now Orglis have full control over Archive. Archives. What a play there from Yeti, and the patience oh, did no. not take it out. But oh, Yeti, you have to sheath that. Put your gadget away. Skies, bobs, and weaves, and he'll collapse on Yeti. A good refrag. It takes a little bit of time, but it's motivated the rest of his team. Michael and Laxing has come to life, too. Taking out my man, leaving Crazy and Brian to try and assault this armory wall. You can see that the electrified bandit wire is still there, and another peek from Reciprocity is a great crossfire established. Crazy trades one off after Skies goes down, but there's Retro there to finish things off, and Crazy will bid us adieu, leaving Reciprocity on a 5 3 advantage, taking the round and playing out exactly the same as we saw when Orglis was on defense. So I have to say that really should have been an Orglis round for a number of different reasons. A little bit of negligence there on Reciprocity's side, playing only one player by Archives to defend that B-bomb side. And he goes down with relative ease, playing an odd position, unable to challenge the Ash of Yeti. But the real mess up there on, was on Orglis's side. They had full control of Archives, but they didn't know it. Why didn't they know it? They weren't gathering nearly enough information. They were sticking to their static strategy of let's attack Armory Wall. And yet he tried his best as an individual to try and seize a different opportunity to give his team a different Attack rotation. But once he found that rotation, getting the uh, opening kill onto the bandit, nothing came of it from Orglis. What needed to happen immediately after that was Yeti just hold down the site. But why didn't he do that? I hear you wondering. Why didn't he just hold the rotation? It's one doorway, right? He didn't know that the site was clear. He had no way to know because no one had droned it and he hadn't droned it. What he was trying to do there was use the Ash Charge to open up a bigger angle to make holding that rotation between sites easier. But it was really poor timing on Yeti's side. And there's no way he could have known that the Jaeger was going to rush back into sight. All things... I mean, that's, that Jaeger rushing back into sight was a little bit weird. I think we could be honest. He knew he needed to regain control of the archives. But the way he did it was just odd. Leave, left himself very Attackers exposed. Either way, I'm surprised. What, 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 the main thing that surprises me is that Orglis didn't rotate anybody else after yet he got that initial frag. I would have expected everybody to say, hey, let's take offices and the full rotation come out. But it didn't happen. And Orglis lost the round because of it. Another thing, too, is how Reciprocity played a lot more of a forward thinking defense on that round in the sense that they weren't as patient. They didn't let Orglis come into them, they took the fight to them which is actually something we've seen an awful lot of teams start doing this season. Yeah, it does and, work out, I think, better in general. Yeah, I mean, and it was it was Wilkie who said in the interview that we did just a couple days ago that if you allow a team like G2 to take their time, they will hunt you down, they will get you off one by one. And I think that's a strategy that a lot of teams have employed, obviously. It's become a lot more commonplace. Because of that, if you deny these attackers the ability to set up either because you might take out a very important tool that they have that round, or maybe somebody who's integral to a strategy, then you end up with a massive advantage moving through because the attackers can't transition around that. Yeah, well, Yeti not expecting that and costing his team. But here in this round, Orglis looking to attack through offices. They've tried to hit armory from the armory wall two rounds in a row. This time they're going on to ventilation, but the defense is very much the same. An excellent shot from Yeti there, really making up for the last round early on. He's gonna take down the Jaeger. Hopefully all those ADSs were in play already. 
You had four bodies from Orgla stacked up on an office side thing just to try and clear out the archives before they transition downstairs. You also had Acid over on Armory Wall, so a bit of a split effort. Though he'll hop off drone and, well, it looks like he's sprinting on over to join the rest of his team. My man takes out Fox A and Reciprocity finds themselves fighting from behind in a 3v5 with time very much on Orglis' side. Keep in mind that this is Workshop downstairs, which has not been won successfully by a defense oh. just yet. But Retro, what oh. is this big brain play? He'll charge right into my man, and these two forces will meet head on inside of the bathroom, giving Brian some awareness. But on Reciprocity's side, Skies and Retro, both very low on HP, means that it's not going to take all that much for Morglis. You miss a couple shots, and well, they'll be doomed. Crazy, right now at the doorway, he's gonna flash right in and he's gonna try to engage on Retro, but oh, Skies has his back! And <laughs> Reciprocity with a great recovery. But finally, Retro will get taken down due to Brian. And with not much time left, Reciprocity's gonna have to hold on. There goes Laxing to Brian, picking up an excellent double kill, and then Skies will now try to head in towards the main hallway. And it's Brian there to take him out. The Thermite, or the Fragmite, some might say. Grabbing three kills to end the round, an impressive recovery from Orglist once again. Put this back one round apart. So this is so far exactly the same as what we saw in the first half in terms of uh, attack and defense and who's been winning what. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if we see it repeat as it has, then we will see a ventilation successful defense here from uh, Reciprocity, and we'll see if they can pull that off. Now, actually, no. If it repeats, we'll see Orglis take the win. And they will go up to 5-5. Five, five. So that'll be interesting if it happens. But uh, given that it was first attempt there from Reciprocity on that ventilation defense, I'm sure that they're going to be able to, need to adjust the way that they hold the site second time around and correct many of the mistakes that they made in that previous one. To be fair to Reciprocity, some of the mistakes there were just Orgus playing exceptionally well. Brian especially was in the right place at the right time in almost every opportunity. Um, apart from that, we saw Yeti's really tight uh, shot from uh, all the way from office wall into armory sandwich, I believe it was. It was a pretty long angle, but whatever exact angle it was, it was very well shot by Yeti, and I'm sure that uh, Reciprocity was not expecting that to happen. So, in all fairness to them, Orgos just had a pretty exceptional round there. I can almost guarantee you that the comms on Mark's side of things were, what? <laughs> And I don't, where, somebody on the team, where'd you die from? I have no idea, man. Yeah, probably something along those lines, and I'm surprised we didn't see an NS in the chat. Mark is very, very soft-spoken, though, so I don't imagine there would have been that much uh, no. weight behind his voice, so to speak. But still, confusion abounds with what happened to Mark. It was just a really nice shot. It was a Yeti. beautiful shot from Yeti, but that's a, that's a real hmm style deal, I feel. Absolutely. Brian working his way towards the armory wall, and he's going to have to wait for the soft destruction from below to deal with those bandit batteries. And there you go. It's the ash of Yeti to get that done. Flashes go in to try and distract along with the Zofia lifeline, and he's going to go for that thermite charge, but Flash himself and have to walk back a little bit there. Brian, I think, is a overthinking this just a little bit too much, but you can see that Fox A has committed to bandit tricking, and he has gotten those batteries back down. There's two bodies playing right now by Armory Wall. You've got Fox A and my man, or sorry, Fox A and Mark, mm -hmm. both playing on the two German operators, and finally, after a utility dump in through that Armory doorway, will we finally see it, but oh! A beautiful nade will take out the exothermic charge, and that actually looks like it was tossed in by my man. That is unlucky, to say the least. Finally, after a minute and a half of a plodding push, we see Orglas get that wall open. And it took a lot to get that done. Yeah, quite a lot of utility, absolutely. Both the ash charges and a lot of Zofia lifeline flashes, grenades, and two exothermic charges. So expensive, but it's done now. And uh, Orgos can start their push into small office and lockers. It's going to be slow still, though. You can see you've got the castle of Retro playing on that drop down just above the server stack. He's got an interesting angle he can work with there. Some mark work being made there by Mark probably earlier in the round, but he's playing by Sandwich, waiting to hold this down. And no, no, Orglis doesn't clear out Sandwich. And two for Mark, a third! 
third. Insane gunplay from Mark, and he gets a fourth of the down on Yeti. He doesn't know it yet, but he has a potential 4K waiting for him to claim if he just gets a little bit aggressive. It might have been called out by his team, and he will make that push happen. Brian now the last alive, and Mark goes for it with the pistol out. Will he get it? Oh, yes, a 5K from Mark. Walking into every possible angle and absolutely destroying Orglis. It happened again. Every time I start casting, then people get aces, man. <laughs> well, let's not detract from Mark's ace there. And and the other thing, the other thing too, the most important part about what just happened was more the fact that. Mark has not really been in any position to be able to collect frags so far through this matchup. He propels his team up onto match point by a great singular effort, almost losing it because it looked like the collapsing body of Crazy Zofia absorbed all of the bullets that Mark was spraying from inside of Sandwich with nobody being aware. How do you spend that much utility to open up the armory wall and not know that there's still somebody playing in there. Did your drones break? Do you have none left? Because there's a minute 30 left in this round. If you've got three to four bodies all pushing Armory side and not a single one of those people have even one drone, then you're doing something very wrong. Yeah, I mean, overall, it was poor utility usage from Orgos, but you really have to put it on Orgos' shoulder as a whole team just for not doing one simple thing, and that's droning out Sandwich. And if you're not going to drone out Sandwich, then check it. You know, when you're making that push happen, you have to gather the information. But it didn't happen, and uh, Mark, as it turns out, excellent gunplay on the Jaeger, able to put his team in uh, just a... Just a win. I mean, all on his shoulders. I have to say, though, I do think that uh, Respross would have been able to recover that round if he hadn't gotten the ace. Uh, regardless, because we saw, I think, a pretty good use of uh, time delay using armory from Respross, and then they got out of that with plenty of bodies still in play. So it would have been really difficult for Orgos to win that if the ace had not come out. Think about all the things that it took on that armory wall, by the way. You saw three flash grenades. You saw two frag grenades go out. I might have mistakenly attributed the destruction of that exothermic charge to a man missing a frag grenade, but it actually looked like Retro's castle was playing downstairs by the doorway to workshop with the hatch open in a small office and threw an impact through that and hit the door frame or even just outside. And because of that, excellent play. And that's obviously something that is orchestrated it's really not that kind of on-the-fly decision-making that tends to happen. So, all in all, pretty impressive. It, it, not just in terms of the way that Mark played that, but also from the rest of Reciprocity, the cavalry. The cavalry, we'll call it. So, we look at this bomb site. We're back upstairs for Armory because the site rotation has gone off. And we're on match point now. That's the big thing. Based off that play from Mark, I mean, we're now in a position where Reciprocity have breaking the, broken the mold, and they're in a, they could easily take this match right here, right now, in the last half of this round. As there's been a very slow take from Orgus so far, and the first death is on Orgus' side. Mark's still playing inside a fountain, and he gets one for himself. Continuing his trend of excellent gunplay, Orgus now find themselves in a corner. Yeah, excellent job from Mark to come alive, but Fox A as well taking out one of his own, and that's utility from Orglis that is gone, and that is a damning play on behalf of Orglis to lose your Thermite and your Buck. A little questionable as to why my man has not been playing more downstairs and playing just simply this linear horizontal play rather than vertical play. I mean, that's obviously a, a specific decision behind why Orglis does this. But it's match point. So you're going to need Orglis to come alive. Both Crazy and Acid will do so with Fox A and Retro falling, putting us at a 3v3. Acid's pass in towards the site will be slowed down for just a second, but he's still going to be able to frag, even if he does have a goo mine in his foot. Laxing trades it off, and oh, Acid is there with a 3k of his own. He's going to look for a fourth, and you can hear the telltale signs of the commando as he's going to tussle with Laxing. The MPX of Laxing will not be able to connect, and Acid, a triumphant 4k, and will push us to the final round, so at minimum, Gonna have reciprocity take one point, Michael, but this is still anybody's game. And Orglas, over the last two weeks, has looked just so damn good, and they're continuing it today. 
Absolutely. But uh, it's still Team Reciprocity in the driver's seat. They only need that one round. They're doing their best to avoid the draw. Uh, Reciprocity really doesn't want to draw at this situation. They're making plays for the top positions in North America. Obviously, it's going to be hard for them to catch up to EG at this point, but it's still doable. And if they get a draw here, that's going to seriously blunt their momentum. Orglis, on the other hand, have not been having a great season overall, and they need every win that they can get. So there's a lot of pressure on both teams' shoulders here to Attackers take to this. Orglis can't, obviously. The most they can get out of this is the one point. But Team Reciprocity are really vying for those three. And all they need to do is win in this next three minutes. Try and put into perspective how important this matchup is. Number one, Reciprocity are trailing Evil Geniuses by two points at the moment. With ten points through their first four games, Reciprocity is going to walk away with at least one. So it's not enough to push them into first place overall. And of course, we have EG versus DZ up next. So it's a possibility that Reciprocity's lead on that standing, should they win here, would only end up being a couple minutes, maybe an hour at absolute most, depending on what happens in that match, of course, Michael. But with the way that NA has played out so far this season, the top three teams are running away with it at the moment. All three of them are sitting in double-digit points, with the next closest being Orglis in fourth with four points. So. Orglis need to be able to collect that one point. It'll only push them to fifth, to, to five points. They'll stay in fourth place. But keep in mind that all those teams below them are going to be playing today. And because you have Dark Zero and EG playing in a matchup of their own, and Reciprocity here playing against Orglis, that means that the remaining four teams beneath Orglis, they're all going to be playing separate matches, and they all have an opportunity to get at least one to three points and vault over Orglis in the standings. Absolutely. Now, Team Reciprocity still has players downstairs. It's going to be Laxing and Fox A in a duo row, doing their best to delay this round. Also, deny the soft destruction from below. You've got the buck, you've got the ash in a position from Orglis. They're trying to uh, open up that floor and do some damage. Speaking of trying to do damage, Laxing will miss his C4 in an attempt to take out one of Team or one of Team Orglis's players just outside a little bit too aggressive there and I mean we, we talked about how that defensive meta is to be you know aggressive to try and disrupt the attack before they can establish themselves but that's a little bit too much on the side of laxing and some wasted utility meanwhile the army wall has been opened up by Orgus and uh, they're looking to also open up that wall into the small office crazy will accomplish that feat this armory defense that we saw so aggressive from reciprocity before has Fallen off just a tiny bit. It's going to be retro playing by the bomb chassis of A, and that's going to be the only real person that's even close. But it's basically going to be free real estate. This crazy vaults right on in, takes out retro, skies trades him off, playing in this doorway right next to the pillars. But there's Laxing to take out Yeti in the door frame. Rather, as Foxy grabs one of his own acid, is there Foxy still oh. from below? A beautiful double kill. And as acid gets the diffuser down, Michael, the only diffuser that's been planted so far in this match. He's going to head for the hills. 50 HP up against a Valkyrie, a Pulse, and a Lesion. Reciprocity have basically been handed this round as Acid is now going to vault all the way down to the main floor and come Attackers back up on Repel. Seven confident. seconds is the timing for the Diffuser. Mark is going to vault right out. And the closed. Shark. He's going to be in dangerous waters, but he's going to be able to grab it. And look at Defender that. Reciprocity the by the skin of their the teeth. Pretty, uh... Pretty impressive final round, and they were swift, being able to push back against the aggressiveness from Orglis to storm in through the armory wall. A great read from Reciprocity, and they still remain without a loss. Four wins and one draw in the season, and for a brief period of time, they will at least be guaranteed to take first overall in NA, barring what happens in that EGDZ matchup coming up next. Well, it was definitely an excellent match from both teams. Orglis put up a heck of a fight, but... Reciprocity managing to win it in the end. A big part of that is Mark's